Well, all month long here on WHAS 11, we have been bringing you the stories of Pride Month on WHAS 11 and our Moments That Matter campaign and how it's being celebrated right here throughout Kentuckiana. I'm joined now by Chris Hartman from the Fairness Campaign uh, to break down what has been a really, really busy year for you. And you know, and not just Pride Month and focusing on that. I think people sometimes forget your work is year round. I know you're already crossing off the days on your calendar to the, <laughs> to the session in January, right? Can't wait for that. Yeah. yeah. Pride doesn't stop <laughs> doesn't at stop. the Fairness Campaign. No. I mean, and heck, it feels like Pride doesn't stop around Kentucky. You know, there are about 25 Pride festivals now all across the Commonwealth. Mm -hmm. It goes all the way from the beginning of the June to the end of October. Oh, wow. uh, and I mean, June and October in particular, the two really front-loaded months both of those months, virtually every Saturday, one, two, three, sometimes four pride festivals on a single day. Is there a city or a town across Kentucky that just started celebrating Pride Month or is doing something small that surprised you in, in a way that you thought, oh, wow, that that's that's the residents speaking up and speaking <laughs> out to have something like that. There. I mean, so many places have pride that I think folks don't imagine uh, Murray, Pikeville, Berea, Richmond Pride was huge this year. So much stuff going on. Uh, you know, just a couple weeks ago, we saw some LGBTQ activists in Corbin held a demonstration. And unfortunately, they faced down the barrel of a gun there with an anti-LGBTQ protester who came to harass them. I, I mean, unfortunately, this is still, Pride is very much a protest for so many queer folks all across the Commonwealth because it is still so dangerous to be out and loud and proud, and it's why Pride is still so necessary. What do you make of the level of tension and how uh, the, the session <laughs> went, how mm. issues were addressed? What do you make of that? Where did it, where <laughs> did it come from to yeah. reach that boiling point? Because it suddenly, I think, a lot of people look around and say, wow, that got hot, yeah. that got heated, and why now? Yeah, let me tell you, it didn't come from the grassroots. It's not coming from the constituency. Um, it, it's coming from well-funded national conservative think tanks, interest groups like the Alliance Defending Freedom, Focus on the Family. They've been pouring hundreds of millions of dollars into this campaign to attack trans kids, arguably our smallest and most vulnerable population. And the only reason they're doing it is for the cheapest political points. I mean, we saw Max Wise and Kelly Kraft do it when they were running for governor and lieutenant governor. They dug their heels in on anti-trans issues because they thought that it was going to score them those cheap political points, and it didn't work. However, nationwide, they've turned it into a numbers game. Several years ago, there were just a few anti-LGBTQ bills filed around the nation and here in Kentucky. Last year, you know, more than 100. This year, more than 550 anti-LGBTQ bills have been proposed all across the nation. In Kentucky, we faced a dozen of them this year. That's more than almost all of my previous 14 legislative sessions combined. And it is just, again, so that folks can put it on their political postcards when they're running for re-election in November. Looking back, what's been the wins, what's been the losses? Because I know you like to look <sighs> to the wins sometimes and say, all right, there's some movement, there's some wiggle yeah. room that I, I can maybe expand on a little bit. It's tough to yeah. look to the positive right now, but what I will share and what I've been saying as I go across the state is that I've never seen our community activated like this before. I've never seen folks engaged in the legislative process. Thousands of LGBTQ Kentuckians came to the state capitol this year to fight for their rights. I'd never seen anything like that. And so much so that, I mean, they, their shouts, their cries were reverberating, were shaking the building, shaking the capitol. And so I've seen the pride festivals bigger than ever. I've seen our events, more folks than ever before. So the strength in our numbers is bigger than ever before. Do you think, you mentioned kind of the, the national focus politically on, on Kentucky, and that's why we saw all the heat. Do you think that businesses are beginning to feel some pressure? Do you see as many businesses uh, being out there and saying, oh, we have Pride Month, this mm -hmm. is what we're doing to support our employees, and this is what, what we're doing to attract employees. Do you still see that momentum that we talked about last mm -hmm. year on the show? And if you don't see that momentum, what is behind that? Yeah, that's such a great question. I wish 
I still saw that momentum from companies. I certainly see the momentum to celebrate Pride Month and to put up a rainbow logo and to maybe donate a little bit to charity. But when it comes to the legislative session in our state and in states all across the nation, we are not seeing the corporate activism like we used to. And I think a major part of it, unfortunately, is the smackdown from Ron DeSantis on the Disney Corporation uh, in Florida that we saw um, a scaling back of companies that are getting into this fray. I mean, we saw Target get bullied out of their pride display in some of the stores across the nation. We need our companies to stand firm and bold for LGBTQ rights, not just in June, but all year long. And unfortunately, we're, we're just not seeing it like we used yeah. to. Um, where can people go to kind of follow along, become uh, engaged mm -hmm. and aware? Yeah, you got to follow the Fairness Campaign on social media, of course, Facebook and Instagram, um, but also Fairness.org and the ACLU of Kentucky. Keep up with all that we're doing um, all year round and especially in the legislative session. All right, Chris, always a pleasure to have Thanks you Thanks so much, Thank Claudia. Thank you so much for stopping by. Uh, so once again, just go to Fairness.org uh, to keep track of everything that's happening locally all around Kentucky.